Okay. Yeah. All right, who's first? So, how did the idea for the series come about, and why did you set it in the the eighties? Um, you know, the the idea came about. We were we were um, really you know we were talking a, a lot about how uh, you know two two things that inspired us. Uh, those are the eighties teen films and eighties horror, um, and we noticed that they all each had the same archetypes, right? The jock, the stoner, the virgin, or whatever. Um, and uh, it just kind of sat in our heads and we thought, wouldn't it be an interesting show to do uh, a horror at a summer camp and flash back to the characters before they got there? And so, you know, get the audience invested in the characters so that when they die, or if they die, it matters. And why we chose 1989 was because um, that's when we went to camp. And this is our midlife crisis show. And summer of 89 was a very special summer for me. And so that was why. And, you know, what we loved about the late 80s was um, it was kind of the end of the 80s and the beginning of the 90s. And uh, there's, a, there's been a lot of shows, I feel like, that have done the early 80s. Um, but very few that have kind of touched into that late 80s, 90s. So for us, it, it just the, our own personal history matched it. We thought it was um, cool to bring something new. You know, I loved, I loved it straight out of Compton that it was late 80s. You know? Yeah. How did the audience respond to the splitting that guys just did? It seemed like uh, it's how us. Yeah, I was there for the first few months. Okay. Uh, it seemed like it was well. We were very pleased to be able to show it to an audience. There's nothing quite like watching a show with an audience live, and that's actually saw you guys at the very back. I wanted to say hi. Uh, it was dark. I know what you're gonna say. Music plays a huge role in the show, and I just wondered, you know, was that a conscious effort to, to really focus on that as well? Yeah, I mean, we're we're all really big fans of music. Um, and the 80s, you know, really lends itself to that. So for us, that's, you know, summer camp was where I would go in and I would have my cassette tapes and, my, and then someone I never had met was like, well, have you heard of this? So so many bands and things in my life, I learned at camp. Um, and, I, and, I, and I think we wanted to celebrate that. The Jew story you guys did was so beautiful. Thank you. Um, was that story like something you were uh, you were uh, you knew that you wanted to tell? Yes. Uh, it was. Uh, that was a story uh, that we wanted to tell early on. Um, I think you know we wrote we wrote the first four episodes before we even shot the pilot, so um, we wanted to build that one, which is why very consciously we, we very rarely had to speak as a person. What we love, you know, at first you think it's just like the, the mysterious loner in the movie. One thing I, I feel like kind of sad about is that this is like maybe next season there's going to be uh, different characters, but for the first season we're already getting attached to these characters, yeah. so we want to see more of their story, in like, you know, the next season. Like, for that. Well, you know, the way we're approaching the show, should we do multiple seasons, is as kind of an anthology where the kind of the mythology of the lake and the camp we continue to explore in different years, and then we can use our cast in different roles. So while they wouldn't be necessarily the same characters, we would you know get to, to see them do different things, and there would probably be some stuff that carries over, you know, mythologically speaking. Yeah, I mean, you know, in 1989, uh, next week's episode is Deb's flashback from this year in the summer of 1970. So already there's a connection. So we could do a potential year where somebody's the director, but it's played. I think episode six, right? Next week is Joel's episode. That's right. I'm Bye. sorry. I can't keep anything on track. Yes. Next week is Joel's, then the week after is Deb's. Can you talk about the cast a little bit? Sure. Like, how, how Zelda is true and why she was the right role in these characters in general? Uh, sure. Which character do you want to talk about? They're all, uh, well, you know, I mean, all, every character sort of represents, um, you know, as we said, that, that the idea was to do the, the, at first you think, oh, it's the archetypes of all these 80s films, but then hopefully peel it back. We learned that Alex was actually, you know, from the Soviet Union, and, and we see Cricket's backstory, and obviously Drew's and Joel's, and, and 
and I guess um, you know when we we you write a character one way, but what you hope is an actor comes in and surprises you with the way they play it. So um, I think for Zelda, you know, uh, when you see episode four, you understand the character in multiple kind of, uh, times in their life, and Zelda just brought this rawness to it and this this emotion and this power that you just couldn't you can't write. It just is. And so when we saw her audition, it was like, well, you know, she's the only one that can play this um, And same with everyone else. You know, for the role of Joel, um, you know, we wrote the film being very similar to us. And he was so good that we're like, let's actually, let's change what we thought and write to him. Ian, can you talk? Uh, can you, uh, a lot of stuff happens in episode five. Like, uh, the first three crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tease? I heard something really big happen. Uh, what can you tease about episode five? Um, I can tell you, well, without giving too much away. Uh, Be careful in the woods, you can say. I would say the title is How to Stay Alive in the Woods, and so. Uh, Something something bad might happen in the woods at some point in the episode. Because he's always pumpkin. Yeah, he does. He does speak. And he does have quite a voice. Last question. What 80s tropes did you really enjoy playing with on the show? Um, I, I think for, for, uh, for me, I loved playing with the 80s tropes of just the, you know, the John Hughes side of the character. You know, like uh, Jess presents herself one way. Every character presents himself in a cliche way, and everybody naturally just assumes that's what it is. It's like these, these, these things have been used over time so long that you naturally accept it. So I think that hopefully when you see the twist, you will truly be surprised because you're like, what are you talking about? Alex is the rich kid. I've seen the rich kid in every 80s movie I've ever seen. No lost Easter eggs. We can look forward to. I thought the um, the Apollo bar was so pretty. Yeah. Are you gonna do more? Uh, maybe one more. Okay. Maybe one more. Cool. Thank you.